This is another, I'm grateful for all these, but this one, this is the one that uh, I've just continued to come back to, hard as it is um, sometimes, to gather with people again who we just have nothing else in common with, but our need, um, our total, complete, desperate brokenness, we have nothing else in common. It's no wonder we bicker when we gather. It's really, it's not, you shouldn't be surprised when the church gathers and we bicker like that. Let's just be careful though, not to give up too easy. Because I've seen too, you know, I, especially in the South, you drive down the street, you see all these churches, and you see their signs out front and say things like traditional service, 830, contemporary service, 11. And that's not, we're not fighting for each other enough. We're not. That, that is not, a, that's, that's a sign of a group of people who are being poorly shepherded, that that would be allowed. That we would be allowed to do, to break up from each other, to separate based on our musical preferences? Really? That's all it takes. That moment when you gather with those people to come and be together with people who you have nothing in common with other than your brokenness, that moment is no place for your preferences. There's no place. Your preferences don't matter. They don't. Every other day of the week, you are, you are told and sold that your preferences are the most important thing. Obey your thirst. I mean, you are in that. There's nothing more important than what you want and how you want it. And yet, there is this transcendent and mysterious and glorious moment when we gather together to ascribe worth to the one who made all things, is restoring all things. And in that moment, if it is the hardest thing you have to deal with all week to be in a room with people who like music that's different than the music that you like, bear that. Bear that. Let it be more important that you are in that room with those people who are different than you than to have your particular preferences met about the songs you like to sing. That just doesn't matter. If we're doing it right, here's an algorithm for you, and you can take this with you. If we're doing it right, you should dislike every about, I'm going to say third song that you sing in church. You should dislike every third song if you're doing it right. Yeah. Because during, during the songs you do like, there's someone else who cannot stand that song, who does not like that style of music, and they're bearing that song to be in the room with you. Who does? We should be more important to one another than our preferences. Can we please stop dividing over our musical preferences? Now, that, I mean, there are other big things. I understand division over. It's more complicated, you know, when you get into. But but things like musical preference, there's no reason to divide. We do not have two churches in one building based on musical preferences. Okay, folks? So let's, again, let's go be a disruptive element. If, if that's the way your place does things, you need to march in there and sit down with your pastor. And you need to tell him that he needs to shepherd you better than that, to allow for that. That is not the answer. The answer is to talk to people about how important it is to gather with people who are not like you. That is the whole point. And that's what this song is about. And uh, so...
to pursue And you cannot care for me With no regard for her If you love me, you will love the church Thank you.